Hello, welcome to Biogrid TV. If you are new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. How the military entered into Moroccan politics The Kingdom of Morocco is one of the five countries in the North African sub-region. Just like other African countries, the military has tried to overthrow the government in power at different times in the country's history. However, none of these attempts was successful. Between 1971 and 2018, two attempted coup d'etats were staged in the country. Let's look into different activities that led to these military interventions. The first attempt at military takeover in Morocco was on the 10th of July 1971. This coup is also known as the Skira coup d'etat and it was led by General Mohamed Midbo, who was the head of the royal military household and the commander of the Moroccan Royal Guard. He and his men wanted to kill King Hassan II who was the political leader of the country at that time. Interestingly, the coup happened on the king's 42nd birthday. The coup plotters accused King Hassan's government and the royal family of being corrupt. Earlier in the year, Medbo discovered that the Moroccan government and the royal family were receiving commissions from foreign countries and the US secret military base. Medbo challenged King Hassan with this information. In response, the king fired four of his ministers. However, Medbo felt that this punishment wasn't enough. He and his men started to plan a military takeover of the kingdom. Medbo's men raided King Hassan's summer palace located at Skirat during the king's birthday reception. They attacked the guests with guns and grenades. The military junta placed the guest and the king under house arrest. At the same time, Medbo's men took over Radio Maroc and announced that the king was dead. But Hassan and some of his ministers managed to escape by hiding in a closet. The coup failed because of the infighting among the coup plotters. Medbo wanted King Hassan to step down from office, but another officer, Commandant Ababu, wanted the king to be killed. In the course of this argument, the royal troops led by General Buhali arrived at the palace and rescued the king. Medbo and Ababo died in this clash. About 92 people were killed, while 133 others were injured as a result of the coup. On the 16th of August 1972, there was another failed coup against King Hassan II in Morocco. That was just a year after the Skirat coup d'etat against the king's government on the 10th of July 1971. The military junta tried to shoot down the Boeing 747 aircraft carrying King Hassan and some of his ministers. The king was on his way back from three weeks of personal engagement in France. This coup d'etat was led by General Mohamed Aufkir, who was the country's minister of defense. He was assisted by Mohamed Amakrain. Mohamed Amakrain was the commander of the Moroccan Air Force Base at Kenidra. Eight people lost their lives while about 48 others were injured in this coup attempt. As King Hassan's plane returned to Morocco, four pilots flying Northrop F-5 fighter jets began to shoot at the Boeing 727. The jets fired continuously at close range until they ran out of bullets. The fighter jets also shot holes through the fuselage, killing some of the passengers on Hassan's plane. When the jets ran out of bullets, the coup plotters tried to throw their auxiliary fuel tanks on Hassan's plane, but this was not successful. At the same time, some of the fighter jets opened fire on the Rabat airport, killing about four cabinet members who were waiting to welcome the king. The jets also attacked the royal palace located in Rabat too. Interestingly, the attacking pilots stopped shooting after they received a radio message from the king's plane saying that the king was dead. Unknown to them, this message was false and it was actually sent by King Hassan himself. However, they believed the message and ended the attack. King Hassan's plane landed at the airport in the country's capital, Rabat, with only one of the three engines functioning. 
After the attack, members of the Royal Troop marched to Kenitra Air Base. They surrounded the air base and arrested hundreds of the officers who they believed were part of the coup. Most of the coup plotters were based in the Kenitra Air Base. The arrested officers were brought before a military court and charged for attempting to kill King Hassan, among other state crimes. Later that day, Mohammed Ofkir was found dead of multiple gunshot wounds. Many people believe that the general killed himself because he did not want to be arrested by the royal troops. However, King Hassan went on to arrest and imprison many of Ofkir's relatives. These people remained in prison until 1991. What have we missed out of this history? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.